light clay straw mix, also known as slip straw, some people refer to it that way, has been used for a long time. Uh, my boys and I, building the house, have just finished packing about 1,100 square feet of walls with slip straw. And what I wanted to do was share a little bit of our experiences and some of the things that we've learned by using this beautiful and easy method for preparing the interior walls. These walls will accept plaster, clay-based plaster, which we're using very readily, very easily, and it makes a very nice surface. So, we're going to get started and see what we need to do first. And the first step is to start with some clay slip. And clay slip is merely a liquid water clay solution that's about the consistency of cream. The cement mixer works really well for mixing the clay slip. Throw in some clay rich dirt and some water, turn it on and let it to run until it hydrates and it makes a nice slip. Alternatively, you can put your clay rich dirt into a tub, in this case a cut off barrel, and so add some water and mix it by hand. It helps if you let it sit for um, a little while, some time, to make sure that it rehydrates well. And when it's thick enough, about the consistency of cream, it's ready to go. The next step is to prepare the straw and the slip, mix them together. And what you're going for here is not a heavy mixture, it's a light mixture, hence the name light straw clay or light clay straw. What do you think of is as mixing a salad dressing on your salad. What you want to have happen is to coat all of the straw with the slip, but not soak it and not have it dripping. So here I broke up the straw, had it all loose from the flakes in the bale, and then I add the slip on top. And the amount to add depends upon a lot of different factors, the main one being the amount of mix that you're trying to put together. In this case, I'm doing about um, three flakes worth from a straw bale. You can mix it by hand on a tarp. Um, in this case, I'm mixing it in the top of a 250-gallon tote and using a pitchfork. And I found that that way works, works fine. Inside the house, it keeps some of the mess from getting on the floor and getting out of control. And you just want to mix this thoroughly. Just mix it up keep working it through. The slip likes to go down to the bottom and you want to bring that up to the top and make sure it all gets mixed in. After I've mixed it for a while, I'll reach in and check and see if it feels wet or dry. If it's wet, I'll add some straws I do here. Or if it's dry, I would add some extra slip and then mix that thoroughly. And again, you just want to, when you add the, the dry straw into the already mixed portion that's too wet, you want to make sure and fluff that all together and your dry will absorb the extra slip, the extra moisture. Once you get it all mixed together, it's ready to go. Now what you want to look and see is that the straw is coated. And there's a difference between fresh straw and this mixed straw. You can see in this photo, on the left is a flake of fresh straw and you can see it's bright and clear and the other is coated with the slip, ready to go. Once the straw has been coated with the clay slip, it can be used right away to pack the walls. Some people like to let it sit for up to 24 hours, but that's not necessary. We've not had any problems with using it right away. In order to pack it in the walls, there's a couple things that need to be done first that I don't show here, but I can explain. One of those is to put 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch strips along the studs on either side. These serve as a key to help hold the mixture once it dries. You can use other sizes, scraps, whatever you have. We cut these out of a 2x4 on the table saw. Also, we use 3 quarter inch thick plywood for the forms. 2 feet by 4 feet. These work really well, and the 3 quarter inch is important because it won't flex when you are packing the straw in there. It will keep a nice rigid shape and stay firm. In order to pack the straw, you don't have to beat it in there. You just need to pack it firm. Not excessively hard, though. Once you've packed to the top of the first form, and we find two feet works really well, take another form and add it on top. Now it'll extend your forms up to about the four foot level. Just put those on both sides. Um, just screw them on. I'm using one and five eighths inch drywall screws, and I've used them over and over. Same screws for almost all of the packing. And that's it. Just keep packing then once you've got it up at that level. You may need something to stand on, something in the bucket to hold your straw to get it up where it's easy to get to, to continue to pack on top. And you just keep 
packing it in there, just firming it up. As I said, not excessively hard or excessively um, firm, just nicely together. Looking at the packing the straw in the wall at a little bit closer angle and see how this works and to share a technique that I found that works well. Number one is to not put too much straw in at one time. Too large of a handful, it'll wad up on itself and get caught and it'll leave voids in the wall when you pack it. You can't get it pressed together as well as you need to if you've got too much in at one time. So I like to put in a, just a nice size handful, not too big, not too small. Too small is better than too big. And specifically push it over on one side against one key or and then on the other side against the other key or to spread it loosely around. Still focusing most of it toward the outside edges because it will accumulate more right in the middle anyway. Keep that, just keep packing it in. And I'm just using a one by one stick and in fact we have several of them of different lengths because as you move up you'll find that certain lengths work better than other lengths and as you get closer to the ceiling you'll need shorter sticks that will still fit and reach to the bottom of your form in order to be able to continue. So we've got a, a variety of sticks and they're all one by ones that we ripped out <coughs> um, of other some boards that we had. found it helpful to take a chisel and kind of round over the edges on one end, the corners on one end of the stick. It makes it feel more comfortable in your hand, especially if you're going to be packing a lot over time, which we've done for the last several months of working on this. We didn't work full time. We worked, you know, two or three days a week. Just keep adding it in, keep pushing the straw together with the stick, just packing and continuing. It doesn't take too terribly long. It does take a certain amount of time to get a wall done. This particular wall cavity isn't real wide, and you can see it takes about two minutes to pack it in to two feet. Just keep adding the straw. Have it there handy. Alternatively, you can have someone feed the straw in from the other side if you don't have the forms all the way up on the back side and you can just keep packing while they feed it in and you can direct them where you want them to put the straw specifically in the in the wall cavity as you want. Bring it up to just almost to the top of the form. Push it down just a little bit below that when you stop before you add the next form. When you add the next form you just continue in the same way and just keep going on up the wall till you get to the top of the wall. Get to the point after we've packed all this, we're going to take off the bottom form and move it up on the top. We'll take this off so we can see what kind of a job we did here. And since I'm moving this up above, the form at the top here, I don't take the screws all the way out. Taking the forms off, which reveals the straw, is always the most exciting part. It's always neat to see what kind of a job you've done. And the straw is packed in the wall is very beautiful. Take that form that you just removed from the bottom and put it up above the second form. And this is in this manner you slip the forms up the wall. At this point we're at the six foot level with the new the form moved up and we'll be standing on a scaffolding or whatever it takes to get up to it. One of the most difficult segments for packing the wall is when you reach the top of the wall especially if there's a ceiling right there at the top of the wall. You can't pack downwards because your packing stick bangs into the ceiling. What we found to do in those situations is to put a form at the top of the wall and pack upwards. In this case I'm just using a small board. I don't have to pack very far. You want to get large enough handfuls of straw to pack in there that they will stick. And if you leave a couple of voids at the top corners, which is very possible, they'll plaster and cover up fine later on or you can put a little cob mix or something in them later. Once you've packed upward into the forms at the top of the wall, add another board to leave a small opening on the wall cavity. This particular two wall cavities, it worked to add one right in the middle and leave about six inch space open at the end. Then take the straw clay mix and pack it across the cavity, pushing it all the way across to the opposite, so opposite stud as well as tying it into the straw already packed above and below. Just work it in there just like you do in the other sections of the wall, except this time you're pushing across and some up and some down. This helps you to avoid hitting the ceiling when you get to the top of the wall. <clears throat> Keep packing it in there. Make sure it's in, pushed into the corners well. 
And when you get to the point where you have about a fist size hole left, it's about all you can really get in there. You're going to want to take a uh, really large handful and get it, and push that in there. And that just helps to tie it in and fill it up. So just check, fill, still a little bit need here in the top or the bottom, add a little bit there and get it ready. It's amazing how much you can actually pack in there. And it is possible to pack this a lot tighter than other parts of the wall, except for the opening space. So now take that <coughs> large handful and work that straight into that void that is in there. Push it in. And it'll fit in there and it'll keep that from falling out. And then you can push the rest in, try to tie in those f straw fibers with the other straw fibers already in there. Tuck some behind the forms. It helps it to relax in the shape that it needs to be in the wall. And so that you don't have something extra sticking out or really ugly kind of surface. This is what we have found is works best for finishing up the wall in the packing. Of course we're going to be plastering all these walls with a clay plaster and that will cover all, all the irregularities. We'll have a few places that we'll have to trim up whether with the chainsaw or some other way but most of it will plaster very easily. So in this case on this wall we were able to pack it in from both sides and push in the last heavy bit and push that straight in and get it set the way it needed to be. Once all of the wall is packed, we've worked all the way up to the ceiling or the top of the wall. So we did have some places in our house that we didn't have a ceiling right at the top of the wall. Once it's done, we can take the form boards off and reveal the wall. Again, this is the exciting point, an exciting time when you get to reveal your work and look at how well it's turned out. So we take the screws out and collect those, take the forms down and store them out of the way, revealing the straw that we have just packed in the wall. There's something really beautiful about slip straw. The straw in the wall is very pleasant, it's very nice to look at. Of course, in our home we are plastering over it makes a very nice wall surface for the plaster. Plaster goes right on it. The clay in the, the straw mixture that's dried will adhere with the clay of the plaster. Smooths on, trowels smoothly, it makes a very nice surface. Plus it serves as a sound insulation barrier. So that's how we've gone about it, packing our walls. I hope this has been helpful for you.